A very good evening to you and thank you so much for sticking to Y254 TV. My name is Cheryl Blessing and this is the Power Talk Show. Now this evening we want to discuss something that we are all hoping to get to as we prepare for marriage and as we prepare for long-term life commitments. What are the dawns of conflict resolution within a marriage setup? Now we have discussed how to choose a perfect partner and what are some of the things that you should consider while you prepare for marriage. Today we want to find out in a marriage setup what should you avoid doing in cases of conflict. And joining me live in studio today I have Belinda Odiambo who is a transformational uh, leader, a transformational coach and a speaker. Welcome Belinda, you look lovely this evening. Thank you so much. You're and welcome. You look good too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and right next to Belinda, we have Naftali Ozvungus, who is a pastor and a certified mediator. Welcome, Naftali. I feel happy, happy, happy appreciation. Ah, and Thank we you, are blessing. lucky to have you here. <laughs> yeah, we welcome. were just trying to find out the, the origin of your name <laughs> because it's a very unique name. <laughs> In fact, my, my official names, uh, as, as in from my, my ancestral, uh, I'm born uh, Naftal Ungaga Nyamongo, but I'm baptized as Naftalius Fungus. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So now we have some enlightenment in that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you again for tuning in to Y254 TV. I hope that you will enjoy this conversation this evening and I want to converse with you as well. I want to hear your opinions, your comments and your questions about the topic. So you can go on our social media platforms which is at Y254. Write us anything. If you have any feedback, if you have any questions, share your comments and we will sample that as we proceed with this conversation. Now I want us to address this matter in uh, different segments because we have the aspect of finances, we have the values and we also have the, the families, the extended families and your other relatives and friends. So we can start by dealing with the values because this is who we are essentially when we come into unity with someone else. So how do you deal with conflict that arises from uh, maybe different religious values, Naftali? How would you address conflict like that? Yeah, so I, I, feel, I feel happy, happy appreciation once again. Uh, in regard to values and uh, with respect to marriage and conflict, uh, indeed uh, you need to uphold those, uh, uh, the tests in arts and manners that are favored by a particular group. And now, in particular, this group must belong to the, the married uh, couples. So you have to consider those, uh, those values. So, so, so that in the event there is a conflict, you look at what the society says. What are your values? What are your upbringings? So, so that now, when you make a, a recommendation or you, you, you make a determination, it will be in harmony with what you have been brought up with. So, 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 so that, because marriage is not a, a one uh, side thing. It, it's like, it's a communal thing. So when you make a decision in marriage, make sure that you look at the interest of the other people, your spouse or your ex, and other members of the family, their family, your family. So you have to consider all these things and bring them into the, the the limelight. So values, and, 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 and I mean here the, the ethical and the moral principles uh, must be articulated in a manner which is worthy of the calling of marriage. Yeah. I like that you've said marriage is a very communal thing. It's not just about you and your husband or you and your wife. It's you, the mother-in-law, the father-in-law from both sides, and even the extended relatives, the aunts and the uncles who are factored into this marriage. Now, Belinda, women are very, we are said to be very outspoken and loud when it comes to conflict. What are the things that you should really avoid as a woman? Let's say a young wife, you've just gotten married, 
it's been less than a year perhaps mm -hmm. and you realized that you have different religious values maybe you want to go to church every day or you want to baptize your children and your husband says no i do not feel like it's a necessity what are the things that you shouldn't do specifically in a situation like that because we're usually triggered that's the first response what shouldn't you do so that you don't escalate the matter uh, first of all, thank you for, for that question. That's a very good question. But uh, when you get into a marriage, you need to know what you're signing up for. So if you get in a marriage and you um, get to realize that your husband does not really like your religious practices or uh, your spiritual practices, um, then the thing that you should avoid is don't force your values on him don't force your values on him because that will make him to be pushed to the wall and he might get agitated so the best thing is to uh, if you're a christian pray over it ask god to give you guidance so that by the time you're going to talk to him about it for the second time you're not going there alone you are you have the help of the holy spirit and you know if you do this and he doesn't give in, continue praying, continue praying, continue praying. But if you're not a Christian, because not everyone who is married is a Christian, uh, we have Muslims, we have uh, atheists, we have people who don't believe in anything at all. Other people believe in the universe, you know, all that. But even those people have values that govern them. Yes? So make sure that you don't force your values on someone else. Try to sit them down when they are sober, not when they are angry. Sit them down and try to have a candid conversation. After trying and they're still not agreeing to your wishes, just go back uh, and give it another try. But if in the event that now you two cannot agree, then look for someone else who's senior than you in the society even before you go to your parents-in-law. Because, you know, when you go to your parents-in-law, they will take the side of the boy of, or the man. If you go to your, your parents, they'll always take your side. Yes, so sometimes it's better to go to someone who is senior and is very neutral uh, uh, in regards to this marriage. He or she is not affiliated in terms of blood relationship with either of you. So I think that is it. But as women, I know we are vocal, but we are not supposed to be over vocal because sometimes our, mm, our nature or our agitation might drive someone away from us. Thank you. And thank you for that. That's very well said. And you've even brought in the aspect of a neutral party who is senior, mm -hmm. who can play a role of a mediator in your marriage. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's why people have uh, a couple in their marriage setups or yes. their wedding days, uh -huh. because that is someone who you can go to in terms of conflict. Mm -hmm. And in case you're watching us at home and you're wondering how we've gotten to marriage, we have different discussions. You can go on our YouTube page and you will find various conversations on things that you should talk about and address before you get to marriage. Because Belinda has brought in the aspect of understanding the your partner's yes. values and their mindset mm -hmm. in different matters. Yeah. So before you get into a long-term commitment, you should understand who this person is. Then it's easier to solve conflict in the setup. Yes. Naftali, now in the case of a gentleman who's married to someone who's vocal, Belinda has told us ladies not to be vocal. And you have your own values that you've gotten from your upbringing. And this person probably had a different upbringing. And they're very vocal about their opinions in times of conflict. What would you recommend a man to do in a situation where they feel overpowered by the voice of the lady? Sure. Okay. Now, number one, be because you are dealing with a conflict. And a conflict here has arisen from uh, a failure to keep that uh, uh, covenant between you and you, your, your partner. So what you need to, to do is to have that an honest and sincere feeling for your partner or for your ex. Be because 
in the same way you, you had the quality of being uh, uh, serious in your courtship and in your dating, is the same way that you should consider having a, 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 a conversation with, which is anchored in sincerity. You must be open and truthful. You must speak things uh, uh, which are true statements, facts. So, 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 so that if, if you speak the truth, you will unlock the truth from him or her. But, but if you speak lies, you, you will always unlock what? Lies from them. So have that uh, uh, quality of being open and, 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 and genuine, uh, no, not hypocritical. Go to things and speak what is it, because it is love. You see, when you are uh, uh, getting uh, married, there's that uh, strong, positive emotion of regard and affection for one another. So this is the spirit which needs to be uh, uh, persevered. But in the event now there is a conflict, look at the things, look, look at the place where you have been from. Then try to breathe in and have a recollection. If you have a recollection and in the, in the, in the right way, you cannot bully them. But you will give them uh, uh, that opportunity, that possibility due to a favorable combination of circumstances to express themselves. Because you may find the thing which came in between and, uh, and dismantled your code of relationship is just a small, a small thing. So given an opportunity, it will be done what? So loved. Number two. Uh, when you are dealing with issues of marriage, you need to look at the legal advice. What does the law say? Because, in fact, the law defines us. The Constitution defines ourselves. We, we cannot define ourselves. We are defined under that body of fundamental principles or established precedents according to which we have acknowledged ourselves to be Governed. Now, the Honorable Framers of the Constitution of Kenya uh, uh, envisaged Article 45 of the Constitution, which now deals with family. And uh, Article 1 says, the family is the natural and the fundamental unit of society and the necessary basis of social order and shall enjoy the recognition and protection of the state. Full stop. So you need to know that I have a family, but the state is, is with me. The state is for me. So let me do everything herein in accordance with what is written down according to the framers of the constitution of, of, of Kenya. Because if you do then uh, the opposite way, you may find yourself now in the corridors of justice. Now, uh, in the event that there is a, a very big gap in that conflict, that is now when you seek that counselor or that consultant. These consultants will bring in alternative dispute resolution mechanisms. So, so that now he will facilitate uh, uh, the, the two partners for them to make up their own determination. What do they want? Do they want to continue or do they want to discontinue? What is the best interest of the children? Because when you are married and you have children, then the child, even if it is one, the child brings another equation. You cannot uh, 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 disorient your, your, yourselves, then uh, uh, not thinking about, about the welfare of the children. Because the Constitution again says in, the, in, in Article 53, sub Article 2, a child's best interests are of paramount importance in every matter concerning the child. Mm. So when you want to uh, boot your ex, know that your ex is a half of your child. Of your child. And you are the half of the, your child. So if you base your ex, you are basing your half. <laughs> yeah. So my mind, because the child here must take that interest. So you cannot just come up and then uh, you want to destroy uh, everything. No, you must mind the children and do, do not give them 
the details. No. You uh, deal with your ex. Deal with your issues. Do not communicate to your ex through your... Your child. Your child. Your child. No, 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 no. And that's, you've brought in Another your first uncle. statement and you've linked it together with... There are so many other parties involved in this marriage. marriage. It's not just me and my man. Yeah. Mm. It's you, your children, your grandparents, Absolutely. your family. Yeah. All the extended people are connected mm. while you make decisions. Mm. And you've given us very good points. First of all, operate from a point of purity and yes. be genuine in your communication mm -hmm. because that will ultimately determine the direction it goes. Yes. And then consider the law because mm -hmm. it's not just you. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're married and you've signed a certificate, mm -hmm. then you're bound by the government of sure. whatever country you yeah. got married in. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> now bringing it back to Belinda, you told us that you have to factor in uh, both values, both people into the equation as you're solving conflict. Yes. What if you find two people, in this generation, we have people who get into marriage at a very young age. How would you adv advise a family that, let's say it's a young couple, that they had conflict from the beginning, from their relationship, from the grassroots, mm -hmm. they would fight and get physical. Maybe the chick got pregnant. Maybe, and then they got <laughs> bound together, yes. or they just decided, because uh, there's this couple that's very popular, mm -hmm. and they physically fight, and now that the girl is expectant, and the boyfriend, it's it's a lot. Mm -hmm. We have so many cases of that. Yeah. If these people get into marriage, how would you advise them to solve their conflicts? Okay, if they decide to go to uh, to the altar together, then that's okay, but even before they get to the altar, if uh, a marriage is toxic and people are fighting in this day and age, people are not supposed to be fighting. That is GBV, you understand? Yes. But if they decide to, to, you know, they decide to get married, then um, first of all, as a coach, um, I would want each one of them to understand themselves. You should understand yourself even before you understand someone else. Because many a times, you point fingers, you blame other people for your problems. Yet, if you blame other people for your problems, you cannot solve them. Because you've given them the power. You can't sort it out. So get to understand yourself first. There are uh, five types of personalities, according to Giant Worldwide UEC. We have uh, nurturers, we have guardians, we have uh, creatives. We have connectors and we have pioneers. And all these uh, personality types, I'll come back to talk about them later. People behave totally different. And you will find that uh, most couples are opposites. Like me, I'm very vocal. My husband is a quiet type, extremely quiet. So before I blame my husband, uh, as to why he's not talking to me. He came from work and he's just on his own world. In, he, he is in his own world. And you know, he's lawyer, he likes earphones. I'm not against earphones. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lawyer and a radio. Well, yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I love him so much. <laughs> you know, but I should understand that this is not me. I should not blame him when I'm bored, because he's not talking to me yet, I know his personality very well. He's the quiet type, he's a guardian. Mm. Yet me, I'm a connector. I can get here, speak to everyone, collect everyone's number. The next time we are meeting, we are friends. So we are total opposites. So if we have conflicts uh, every time and again, make sure that you understand yourself, then now you can venture into understanding this other person so that any time he's doing something you look at everything from his point of view before you start accusing him or accusing her because if you keep on blaming people you will tend to give them the power and you'll never sort out issues but then uh there's uh, a second point that i want to bring in that never make any decisions when you're angry because the decisions that you'll make when you're angry, you will decide to talk. And if you talk when you're mad, you might say things that you can never take back. They will hurt the other person. In as much as you will apologize, they will, they will say they've forgiven you, but the words that you said 
can never be erased. It is not like, um, you know, if there are thoughts, thoughts cannot be quoted. Silence, actually, silence cannot be quoted. When you're mad, keep quiet. Because sometimes if you speak, you will speak words that will make someone die. So avoid speaking when you're mad. Uh, try to understand your partner, even as you try to solve out this issue. Another thing is that what makes us to have conflict sometimes in our marriages, especially if we have had previous relationships, is that I am dating, this is an example, I am dating Naftali, but, or I'm married to Naftali, but I'm not married to Naftali alone. I'm married to Naftali plus 50 other people. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the people I dated before. So anytime uh, Naftali does something that triggers my traumas, I remember the 50 people who, who uh, yes, the, yes. So, you know, I'll be mad at him, but I'm also mad at 50 other people. So try to go back to your emotions mm. and deal with those emotions first, even before you get married to someone. If yeah. you are not healed, heal fast. But even if you're married and you're not healed, it's never too late for healing. Yes, you can heal and emotional healing is very possible. You don't just have to, there are so many tools that are used for emotional healing or trauma healing. And it's also being intentional yes. about what you intend to do. To if do, you want yes. to improve, you, you will, will make improve. the steps to improve. Yes. And I hope back at home you're getting what she's saying. Mm -hmm. And Naftali has also dropped some gems. I hope you're picking up some notes. Mm. If you're dating someone and you intend to get into a marriage with this person, know who they are, understand mm. yourself and them mm -hmm. so that you avoid some petty conflicts. Because yes. sometimes I believe mm -hmm. the conflict is because of lack of understanding or yeah. lack of proper communication. Mm -hmm. Now, Naftali, mm. you have been uh, vocal about focusing on other people in your relationships. And Belinda gave us a very classic example of avoiding taking advice from your immediate in-laws mm. because there's the aspect of being biased. biased. But would you advise a young couple to even get advice from their friends, their aunties, their uncles? Especially, let's focus on the friends. Because mm. we know sometimes people have friends who may not have their best interest at heart. And people who are not even experienced, but they just give mm. you advice. Mm -hmm. Would you advise a young couple to take advice from their friends? Now, in the event of a conflict, uh, you, you can seek advice from friends or from relatives, but it is limited. Mm -hmm. It is not every friend whom, whom you, 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 meet. You, you meet can give you advice. Mm -hmm. it, it's not every member of the family who can give you the right advice. So if you need advice from f friends, then look for friends who are experts, friends who are consultants, friends who are professionals. So if you get a professional and he's a friend, the better. But if you don't get these people, you yourself, you have that right or power to make decisions and give orders. Begin from yourself. Mm -hmm. Emancipate your mind. Mm -hmm. Look at the things which you need to do and which you, do, you, you don't. Have that compassion. Have that humane quality in you. Because you see... This is a conflict of a person whom you have lived with for either five years, 10, 15, you see. It, it's, no, it, it's not an enemy. It's a person whom you have been a, a friend with. So can you think twice and just follow, have that independent mind, have that self-governing mind, have that autonomy in you. Do not be controlled by outside forces. Yeah. You know where the problem began. So you can use uh, words, create them in the spiritual realm. Say this marriage will work out. Mm. This relationship will work out. Mm. No one will dismantle the, the, this. Because the word of the mouth is very supreme. Mm. Your tongue. In the, in the book of uh, Psalms chapter 45, uh, verse 1, uh, my heart is stirred up by an open theme as I recite my verses to my king. My tongue is the pen of a skillful writer, full stop. Mm. So David knew about the power of the tongue. So you as a, a, a husband or a wife, 
who are now uh, in, into loggerheads in a conflict, use your mouth to create now that cordial relation, to, re to re-establish. Because there was a cordial relations which has been destroyed. Now use your mouth, use your tongue to re-establish. And that's why Belinda even brought in the aspect of being careful yeah. with your words. Yeah. Because mm. they can make or break Someone. your relationship. Absolutely. Mm. And I hope you've gotten that back at home because our guest last week also emphasized the value of the power of the tongue and your words. Mm. Because there's a lot of power in that. Mm. Now I want to understand family in that aspect of the relations because I want us to focus on that external relations yeah. if we have conflicts that arises from the families your mother-in-law comes into the house and then she starts questioning everything she's like this lady can't cook she can't clean my son prefers things like this belinda <laughs> in a case where the mother-in-law comes into my mother-in-law yes to my house yes or whatever, whatever conflict that may arise because mm -hmm. there's always some conflict oh, yeah. between the family mm -hmm. and you as a couple. Yes. How do you address conflicts like that with your partner? Instead of, because unajoni mama yake. And there's always the sensitive part of, it's my mom. You cannot badmouth the mom. Yes. You cannot talk about uh, the mom uh, in a negative way um, with him because this is the mom. First of all, it calls for a lot of wisdom. And uh, the good thing is that if we ask for wisdom from God, he will give us. But you should not also uh, be in a scenario that you're too familiar with your in-laws. Like, you know, that your mother-in-law is coming to stay in your house for a very long time. Familiarity breeds what? <laughs> it's a conflict. Mm, yes. Sure. Lazima concept is a yeah. Because this there. Yes. Kuchunguzana. Kuchunguzana. Mm. Then you come to my house, uh, you don't like the way I cook, uh, if the food has a lot of oil, you know, those small, small issues mm. are the ones that will build up. Mm. And you know, sometimes we can try to downplay. We, as women, we can try to decide, to, we bottle it up, but then one day it will explode. Mm. So the best thing um, is to try to find an amicable solution of just telling your partner. Because again, you can't go outside discussing about your in-laws with other people all over. You know, here it has a core rumors. Mm. Eh? True. So talk to him first. Just tell him. Uh, you know, you've learned him. You know how he talks. You know how he operates. Uh, make sure that he's in a good mood. Understand his love language. There are five types of love, love languages. You can Google Yes, if he's someone who likes affirmation, affirm him, bring his mood. When he's happy, drop the bomb. <laughs> then I'll tell him, you see. So it it's is not strategy. bad. Yes, strategize. Mm. Yes, be a wise woman. Strategize. Don't go there with all the, you know, uh, thorax, like, a, you know, a blue or blue as we are, you know. <laughs> yes. eh? Your mom this, your mom that. No, strategize. Make sure that he's in a good mood to talk then make sure you tell him in a nice way. Frame your words. I can also segue into what um, Naftali said that our, our words have power. And you know, uh, in as much as our, our words have power, you said also about in being intentional. Rehearse in your mind if you have a problem with your speech. Because sometimes we can be very intentional. You go there, <laughs> hey, I'm going to tell him. Like, but then by the time you reach there, you switch off and you mm. do something else. Your emotions so, take yes. over. Yes. So what you can do is have a mental rehearsal of what you are going to say and how you are going to solve this conflict. If you rehearse it, you'll find yourself doing it. And do not treat your mother-in-law or your father-in-law in the same manner they are treating you. Do not repay evil for evil. Mm. If they are treating you in a very funny way, just assume you are not even seeing those uh, uh, negative things that they are doing to you. Respond with positive vibes. So, you know, with positive vibes, positive vibes are very addictive. If I start behaving in a positive manner, eventually, you will also start 
uh, behaving in a positive manner. That's so true. if you want to solve it, make sure that you don't repay evil for evil or you don't retaliate immediately, but make sure you go to your husband when he's in a good mood. Strategy, strategy, strategy. Thank yes. you. I really love our guests today. They're very rational and that was very clear minded. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a very clear way of solving conflict. Kachini kwanza. Think about it. Think about what you want to say. Mm -hmm. Then approach the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, most of us just blow up. The minute something happens, you storm into the room and you're like, no, your mom you has react. done this today. Uh, yeah, yeah, you are reacting. <laughs> Which is very wrong mm -hmm. and it will not solve the conflict. It mm -hmm. will just create more conflict. Mm -hmm. So I hope you're taking note of that, Nyumbani. Mm -hmm. Yes. Naftali, let us talk about exes. <laughs> How close should you be with your exes? Especially when you're married. Especially. Especially when you're married. Yes. So, who is an ex? Number one. Who is an ex? <laughs> you see, we, we, we have exes uh, in different Dimensions. formats. <laughs> How did they become an ex? <laughs> <laughs> so, I like this. there are things which you cannot uh, eliminate from an ex. I'm, I'm, I'm saying this with an honest and sincere feeling. Yeah. Like now, I, I, I have a, a, fr a friend who, who had a, a lady and they were disposed to get married. But the, the marriage it did not happen because the the parents of the lady argued that this comes from a, 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 a different religious background mm. Mm. so that was the reason as to why they yeah, split yeah. so he went ahead and married from another mm. there is no point this lady uh, 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 accused him of any, anything they were they were having harmonious relations they were having freedom from disputes. They had that absence of mental stress and anxiety. They were enjoying their lives. This, this is the only thing which made them excess. So you wanted to say to me that the businesses which they were doing can stop because of this. <laughs> Hon honestly. No, no, argue. Uh, argue blessing, argue this. Uh, uh, let's say your ex is ABCD. Now, put to me the question, maybe your ex became an ex because of ABCD. What do you want to, I, I, I mean, what distance did you, did you keep? <laughs> I like what you have yeah. brought in that aspect. Yeah. Because hapo ndio penye tunataka. Hapo sasa ya niambia. Hapo ndio penye the, the, the issue is. The ex who you have no conflict with. I'm kukosana tikosabu mapenzi meisha. Someone cheated. Mm. They were disloyal. Mm. It was just something that an external factor mm. that made you. Maybe at Alihama country. Yeah. Akenda Europe. Sure. And you're here. Uh. But how would your wife feel? Let me tell you now. <laughs> Let <laughs> me answer you. Please. Excuse. Belinda is it. Excuse. excuse. Let's hear <laughs> after you. Then we come to Belinda about this matter. Excuse me. Mm. Now, you see, my ex, we are not doing anything mm. which is outside that uh, 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 covenant between mm. me and, and now my wife. Mm -hmm. My ex remains my ex, but there are some other things which we needed to do. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm what telling you, I'm things? telling you, number yeah, one, so number one, if my ex was a member of my altar, mm. can I avo avo avoid her in the altar? I can't. No. That's if uh, if uh, my ex was uh, a member of the board where I sit, can I enter into the boardroom and then I do, I don't speak but to I them? Sit with her in the board, pass to the board. Honestly, <laughs> say like this, say like this. The, there are things which you need to do with your ex, and there are things which you don't need to do. But you you can't eliminate your ex from your mind. It's impossible. Hey, it is I like that. I, it is it is very difficult. Here. Give me a minute. Yeah. Let me read the comments. <laughs> then we come to Belinda. Because this is a very burning issue. <laughs> so this is on Facebook. Thank you so much for sharing your comments with us. I have Ale King's Jeshi who says, Watching live from 001. 
So when solving conflict, just try make it a win-win situation between the two. Mm. Thank you so much for that. That's a very wise way of putting it. We have Missy Waidara who says, thank you for the information and lesson today. Karibu sana. Including children, that is one don't. If a father is having a conflict with his wife, who is the mother, they shouldn't include children in there because the conflict is between them. Thank you so much, Waidera. And I hope back home you're taking note of that. Do not include the children in the conflict. We have Don Dada who says, well represented from Homer Bay. When solving conflict, make sure the case occurs between the participants can be a solvable case, not a joke. Thank you, Don Dada. That is also very good advice. Uh, we have Abiud Kayala who says, uh, I think he's quoted someone, Dr. Wameno Wakuyu. Manyanja, Bungoma County, represent, present Hadita Mati, thank you. Alex uh, Aleko says, hashtag Power Talk Show, Alex from Kibwezi, when solving an, a conflict, avoid the blame game. Give your tooth. Thank you so much for that, Alex. That is very wise. We have Twist Ngoro who says, Ndani from Mwea. Thank you for watching us, Twist. We have Timothy Ngaira with uh, three different comments. He says, Pamoja kwenye show nikiwa mitume kitale. Thank you, Timothy. Y yes, I think all of that is just to sum up that he's watching. Thank you so much, Timothy, for your comments. And thank you for tuning in. You can continue to reach us on our social media platforms. Nahi issue ya ex. And any mniambie, wewe nyumbani, would you be comfortable is you, if your partner is still friends with the ex? Now, Belinda, <laughs> I know you're burning to yeah. say what you want to say. Do you know what? Mm -hmm. um, yes, you might be at the altar with your ex. You might not be having feelings for your ex, but the feeling might not be mutual. Maybe your ex really wants you back. And you know, this is flesh. Yes, you are, a fle you are yeah. you're operating <laughs> in flesh. Yeah. This is someone you are very close with, mm. especially if your relationship had some conjugal benefits. Mm. So any time, yes, uh, at the altar, you're, you are okay, but outside the altar in a hotel that you're discussing business with your ex, even if there's nothing uh, sinister that happened between the two of you, maybe it was uh, the case of the religion, like your friend's uh, ex, mm. your friend plus the ex. Mm. What if they met at a hotel, just the two of them, and then they start reminding the good old days, you know, how you used to. You papa saw me on the back. <laughs> uh -huh. The moment your wife will hear that you're with your ex, because what are you doing with your ex? Same case. It's not only about men. I know, uh, I know some women who are also friends with their ex, but their husband don't like it. Even me, uh, I have an ex and uh, at times he would be uh, tempted to call me you know just to call oh I was checking up on you you know those are nonsense why are you checking up on me <laughs> we are done Bana. we are yeah. done Anna. I mean I mean another I mean a serious marriage mm. now I mean something that is uh, permanent as in I mean something that is long lasting you had a chance to keep me but you couldn't so why would you just keep on checking up on me all over and over again? The time you had with me when you were supposed to check up on me was done and dusted. And you know, any time there are things, there's, uh, we have traumas, like when you have bad memories, but even the good memories can trigger your body to do something. That because is true. The body, does, but the, the, the body does not know the difference between uh, something that happened in the past if it's in your memory versus something that is happening now. Anytime I remember kissing someone and I'm deeply immersed in it, the same feeling I had when I was kissing that person is the same feeling I'll have when I'm doing in, well, present in my moment. present body. The body does not know the difference. That is scientifically proven. Yes. So uh, imagine I'm seated next to my ex and my mind goes back uh, down the memory lane we were doing uh, you know we were lovey-dovey and all that your body will start responding to external stimuli you understand and before yes. you know it 
Utaku mefanya makosa. Something can happen. Something can happen. And you know, the, yes. the funny thing about what you've said, I just watched a video yesterday mm -hmm. about muscle memory mm -hmm. of dancers who maybe mm -hmm. practice to one song for so many months yes. that maybe two years later you play the same song mm -hmm. and their body naturally starts making the moves and dancing. Yes. So I may agree with you, Naftali. It's okay to keep friendships, but I think in terms of uh, marriage, mm -hmm. you have to consider your, your partner part yes. and the feelings of your partner. Mm -hmm. It's not just about you mm -hmm. and your ex. You may have some friendship, it may be purely business, mm -hmm. but there's also emotions, as Belinda has said, there's yeah. always the emotions mm -hmm. that remain on both parts. It, it, you may have no intention to, mm -hmm. to want this person back, mm -hmm. but they may have some intention. So now, based on that, let me let me leave the ex <laughs> for a minute. I want us to get into finances, and before we do that, mm -hmm. I want to ask Naftali, what would you recommend about the boundaries of uh, male and female friendships in a, in a marriage? If you have some female friends, even female colleagues, how should you maintain those boundaries and make it clear that we are just friends, we are just acquaintances, and that is it? Yeah, so it's it's an easy easy thing because you know you cannot choose for me friends True. or you cannot choose for them friends. Yeah. So they may decide to have friends, uh, male friends, or female female friends. But now, when it comes to fi finances, then it depends on where you you are thinking is because everyone has an orientation to 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 do with the friends. People come with that uh, heart of generosity that I can help anyone. So you cannot uh, in instruct me whom to give and whom not to give. So in the in the in the matter of uh, whether I'm, uh, I'm 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 assisting a, a male friend or a female friend and then you come with your own thinking and then uh, you you feel in the blank spaces it must not arise in any relationship because you must ask me why are you doing this so if uh, i'm disposed or inclined to explain clearly this is why i'm giving blessing uh, money or belinda money no, not unless then you 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 come up with your own uh, uh, thinking. Mm -hmm. But uh, I I I understand that finances, uh, the way you deal with the finances with your friends with your family, uh, you must have your own your own personal your own personal budget and and that underlying structure how you want it to to be because you understand your basic needs, you understand your secondary needs, you know how to weigh them. Mm. Yeah. And uh, like you've said, there's also individuality in a relationship. Mm. I have different interests, so do you. So I may not have the same friend group as you. Mm. As long as there is respect, then it should be something that you accept. Mm. Because you can't dismiss someone from being friends with their colleagues because Kazimia <laughs> Taungia Nanani, Honestly. But, mm. but there's a but here. Yes. But in as much as you're giving out uh, money or you're um, helping your friends, make sure you meet the basic needs in your house first. You cannot be a charitable or group NGO. Outside you are an NGO, but inside your house, uh, there's no food. It doesn't make sense. That's why you are not being genuine. You have to meet the basic needs of your house first. Yes. Before you go out helping other people. That is the uh, point I needed to make there. And uh, Naftali said that he should not be instructed. <laughs> we don't instruct, we advise. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We are just advising. Amen. <laughs> I like it from the women's perspective. Because <laughs> yes. sometimes we say something with such authority, mm. it's final. But it's advice. It's, it's advice. It's an advice. Yes, it's an advice. <laughs> Thank you. Because sometimes we already, you know, sometimes women have like a sixth sense. Mm -hmm. You might be helping your friend over and over again. Maybe you're giving him money to go and drink. Yeah, you sure. understand? Yeah, sure. sure. Yet your money is being wasted out there. Mm -hmm. And there are some uh, uh, key things that you have not done. Mm -hmm. Our brothers uh, um, before never used to build houses in uh, Ushago. 
and in the city they were the p life of the party. But nowadays we have Chanukad. Mm -hmm. Yes. Luos are building, you know, but before we could you know, be the life of the party. We were NGOs outside in the club. They're the ones who are Tangika ring me mm. the meza or mm. like see, it's chafua. called chafua, yes. <laughs> chafua, chafua meza. meza, me chafua pale, me chafua uku, but inside his house there's nothing, there's to, nothing, show there's nothing to show for it. Hana nyumba, hana nini, they have not invested. So sometimes also just look at the uh, aspect or another angle from your partner. Mm. What are they trying to say? Before you dismiss them, get to understand them. From yes. which point are they uh, talking? Are they genuine or are they just malicious because they, don't, they want to control your finances? And there are people who, mm. some friends who know you have money. Yes. And they know if they ask you for money, you, you will, will give them money. <laughs> yes. yes. So they can be dependent on, on you. you. Mm. So you have to, maybe when someone gives you advice, then you, you can see it from a different perspective. Mm. Now let me talk about women with money mm -hmm. we usually have this ideology it's it's a belief that women will keep secret accounts uh -huh. stashed away somewhere mm -hmm. and never tell their husbands about it mm -hmm. belinda mm -hmm. do you think it's right for women to do that and have like other investments mm -hmm. without the husband knowing um no i don't believe in that because i have to ask for what i give if I want honesty, let me give honesty. If I want transparency, let me start by being transparent. Uh, there are scenarios whereby we hide or we stash money away from our spouses. Then, when we die, this money gets lost completely. Yet, your kids are being, uh, uh, the, your kids are, are being done for fundraising to go to school, yet you have a lot of money. Be transparent. If you want to avoid conflict in terms of finances, be transparent because there's no secret. You will think it's a secret, but your husband will get you one day. There's a day at a kwatu anafanya kitu karisiti ya ATM tu imetoklezea. Na apate yu pesa. And you know, the devil uses secrets to punish us. Mm. So if you don't have any secrets, then you don't have anything to hide. Yeah. Then you can now rightfully ask for the other person also to be transparent. But and you know someone might even misinterpret. Yes. At on a pesa ulize umetoa api all this money. Eh, they, they may think, think you have, they, some you other have a mubaba. There. Yes. There's mm. like a mubaba giving you money. Yet it's your own yeah. sweat. Mm. Just be transparent. And I like that because I've also had a case of a gentleman. Mm. There was a story I had on Twitter mm. of someone who's been living in his house rent free for the past three years because the landlord must have passed away <laughs> <laughs> and no one knows about this fact, house. I had it. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Naftali, yeah. what will you advise them? And because men also hide families, mm. they will mm. keep a whole family mm. aside and then Sikuya Mazishi, mm. then there's this wife and children who are coming up. Mm. So that, that is now where wisdom uh, comes in. Wisdom has five elements. Number one is knowledge. Number two is experience. Number three is understanding. Uh, number four is common sense. And then number five is insight. So if you have these five with you, you are good to go as far as wise men or women is concerned. So uh, I, I cannot uh, give um, a, a judgment to someone who is hiding mine because you see you you know the situation you know if i i i, I, I reveal this this cash to blessing this is what will happen so at the moment i will not reveal but i i i will re reveal it maybe later on so it's about you being prompted or having wisdom because there are people who have mental illness. There are people whom you can't show things. They will possess them as, as theirs. Yes. So, so you need wisdom even <laughs> in the family. <laughs> you are one. Yeah. You are no, one no, no. for crying you, out loud. You, you know, you, you, you <laughs> see. <laughs> 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 you are one. You are one.
you are one. How but, comes but, my body is yours, but yes. my, my, your money is not mine? Yeah, Belinda. <laughs> <laughs> be, be, Belinda, we we are one, but mm. uh, one part is mm. uh, is uh, is ill as, uh, as in the mental illness. You see, there is this function of mental disorder. You can see it. But what if I'm not ill? I'm just yeah, okay yeah. spiritually, yeah. So, mentally, so if physically. If you are okay now, and if you are okay Alice, now, yes, then uh, it's <laughs> good now to come down and then discuss about about your money together. Yes, but and that's if the you realize, you but, wisdom, but, but, <laughs> but if you realize, my my lady or my man has, has some functional mental disorder. Mm. When it comes to cash, then it <laughs> do not reveal. Pesa iti ni akili naruka. Yeah, kemali. Walang. You need wisdom. You need wisdom. wisdom. You you must become a wise man or woman. Belinda, turn up for mental illness. When you are that woke or sour, you don't have issues. What if you're dealing with someone who actually has has issues? An issue, maybe anger issues, narcissism, and you know your partner. Say a conflict. Nita sema hivi. Yeah, touch kwa hi point na kimbie nayo. And that's not what I meant. How do you solve conflict with someone like that who is mentally ill? <laughs> Take them to a mental uh, institution if they're mentally ill. But it's not, you know, the the like narcissism. Let's say that, or mm -hmm. someone to say some mental illness mm -hmm. to say someone when ye, it's an only child. Mm -hmm. He's used to having his way because well, he's always had way. yes, mm -hmm. and he does his nikichongumu hataki kuskia hataki kulewa. It's his way or the highway. Um, then in that scenario. I would help them. First of all, I would try to help them to become a better person. Yes. Because you know, everyone can get better. There's no personality that is like permanent and cast on stone. You can change things. Anyone can change. If there are people who are used to t having it all, then you help them to see your side of the other side of the coin. Yes, because you know, if someone uh, likes having it all, um, more often than not, you are the opposite. You cannot be two people who are just the same type of personality. So you try to help them to become better before you reveal your finances. But don't, don't put it a secret for life. Just try to make them better first. Help them to work on themselves. Help them to see that they have a problem so that they get help or you help them to become better then now you also unpack everything you put everything on the table because i believe in transparency mm. yes and that's that's what marriage is for yes. you're supposed to help help the other person improve. yeah change I, I in that <laughs> scenario <laughs> yes <laughs> in that scenario i would keep my cards close to the chest fast. <laughs> <laughs> if they're yes. adamant to change because they think they're always right you know that is also pride and pride goes before a fall true yes pray so for them and yes and pride is a sin it is yes so help, ask god to help them to see the areas that they are failing or falling short yeah because you so know you can't you can't change a person exactly you can't directly change a person but you ask God to help them True. if they refuse to change. Yeah, so. I like that because mm. God can change someone. Yes, you can't, you can't. But God will definitely step in. Yes, exactly. Now, Naftali, let me bring it back to ex, uyo ex wako, mwenye you left at good terms. Mm -hmm. Let's say one time you're having a, a Kesha. Hmm. at church hey. and then it's a bit late Jesus you have to Christ go is home it's far you're in Naivasha <laughs> you decide let's book a room together something happens and you happen to cheat yes I see anything just anything maybe even kissing you don't even have to sleep with a person what would you do in a situation where you find that you have cheated on your, <laughs> on your spouse eh <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay, what will I do in a, in a situation <laughs> if I find myself? <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> number That's one, an implication. Number one, <laughs> you see, you see, number one. That's an implication. Number one, uh, be, because now I've done it. Let me assume I've done it. Uh -huh. uh, I will ask for forgiveness. Number one, I will feel remorse for myself. 
So that means you would go home, tell your wife. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> listen, li listen to me very carefully. Yes. When you sin, and uh, especially now in the matter of now uh, adultery, uh. Uh, you 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 feel remorse first in the spiritual realm because no one is righteous. Mm -hmm. Number two, mm -hmm. yes. absolutely. Because looking at you alone with the last, I've it's already seen. a already sin. Said, yes, uh, uh, true. Uh, the seen. last of so the eyes. by 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 this I mean now let, let's consider your your question. It is that actual sin, mm -hmm. that actual flesh. Mm. So it's no it's not a big thing to me or to us. It must not be a big thing. It it must not uh, 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 bring us down. Mm -mm. It is just a sin. <laughs> li li listen to me very carefully. The listen, listen to me very carefully. <laughs> Listen to me very carefully. Mm -hmm. A sin is a sin. Mm -hmm. True. Uh, Before God. Yeah. Mm. So if you find yourself, maybe willingly or unwillingly, you have sinned, mm. know that you are a believer, number one. So if you know you are a believer, you know you have a God. And this God is full of mercy. He's full of lenience. Mm. He, has that, he, 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 he has that disposition to be kind and forgiving on you. Because the blood, the covenant, the will of the terms of the covenant of the blood of Jesus Christ has that capacity for rational thought. Because it says, come let us reason together. Mm -hmm. So if you have sinned in that way, feel remorse first. It is very important. Because when you feel remorse then in the spiritual realm, you, you are forgiven. forgiven. Mm. But now to your spouse at home, mm. you can't reveal them. It, <laughs> do you, do you know? it's a secret? Do you know why? You, you will find a way. You will find a way. Not to reveal, but to uh, reveal to your spouse that you have some weakness. So that now you can devise your own ways to, to, to do what? Yeah, to bring some recompense. But you cannot say exactly. Because if you say exactly, then it, 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 it may bring another thing. What if they it find be, out? No, let me ask, <laughs> let's hold that. <laughs> let me ask Belinda on the counter side, because we're running out of time. Mm -hmm. If you, as the lady, mm -hmm. you are the one who has cheated. Mm -hmm. You may be met with an ex from five years ago who was really good, mm -hmm. but one thing did not work out. Mm -hmm. Would you tell your husband, if you at a come make his to? Um, I would also do the first step, feel remorseful. Ask God for forgiveness because I'll be convicted. If you don't uh, ask for forgiveness, then sometimes now it becomes a habit. True. Yes. So I'll ask for forgiveness. Uh, then after that, I will tell my husband. I will. I will. I will. I will. Because I'm that transparent person. Anything that happens to me, I tell him. Yes. I'm an open book. Even and knowing always, how difficult yes, men are. are. And I'm always willing to bear the burden and take the consequences. I'm ready for the consequences. Because uh, by the time I got married to him, I decided that I'm becoming one with him. Yes? So anything that happens to me, whether it's good or bad, I'll share with him. But I'd also devise a method. I will not just go to him. You know what? <laughs> just like that. You know what? Cupcake today I cheated on you. No. <laughs> you have to be wise. I as have well. to be wise. First of all, I'll ask, what would ever happen if one day I cheat on you? I mean, like <laughs> you. But eventually, I'll have to tell him because it will eat me up. Knowing that I'm sleeping next to this person, I you cheated on them. Team. Yes. And you know, I am not saying anything about it. Let me just tell him. And then he will decide to forgive me or not. I will bear the consequences. I like that. Because yes. that's also taking accountability yes. for your actions. Yeah. So le let's wrap this conversation up. Mm. At that point, mm -hmm. let's get some final comments in under a minute from both of you as we wrap up the show. Naftali, what would you tell a young man who's intending on getting married, who's just gotten married, what's the final advice you'd give him tonight? Number one, if there is a conflict, maybe in that relationship or in 
that marriage do not be easily agitated do not lose your self position have that steadiness of mind under stress so so that out of that now bold mind you you have another an, another aspect of of life so after after considering so many so many cases and and, and 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 then giving your mind that open space you will now be able to make a, a, a bold move so do, do not just make moves uh, 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 unnecessary thank you for that that yeah. is very clear and i hope you've gotten that mm. be clear minded when making decisions belinda what's your parting shot for our ladies tonight be quick to forgive don't carry uh, your husband's or um, your spouse past mistakes into the uh, current conflict. If you're dealing with this conflict, deal with this conflict. Don't carry uh, past mistakes into this conflict. Number two, ABC. Always be curious about your partner. Know what makes your partner happy. Know what kind of partner you have. That will really strengthen the bond in your marriage. Then ABG. Always be grateful. A grateful heart attracts a lot of happiness. If you're grateful, even amidst conflict, you will see that your mood will start changing. So remember, be quick to forgive. ABC, always be curious. And then ABG, always be grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you as well. That's very sound. So this is our parting shot for this evening. It's from David Rico who says... To be adult in relationship is not to be conflict free. It's to resolve conflicts mindfully. And I believe we have another quote. We can bring that up. This is from Thomas Crum who says, the quality of our lives depends not on whether or not we have conflicts, but on how we respond to them. Thank you so much. That is it for this evening. We've tried to understand how can you solve conflict. You have to be mindful, you have to be intentional, and you have to understand yourself and your partner. That is it for this evening. You can catch a repeat of this show tomorrow between 1 and 2 p.m. You can also find us on YouTube in case you haven't found this. And that's it. Thank you so much. I'll catch you again next week, same time, same place.